This project is not just for Warhammer, and it contains a new technique for hard coating terrain pieces. Hey guys, welcome back to Black Magic Craft. I wanted to whip up some quick and easy scatter terrain for 40K. And I came up with these simple but really interesting little structures. And while I decorated mine with some Nurgle iconography and gave them a kind of gross, grimy, rusty, metallic paint job, you could use these in just about any type of game or setting depending on the finishes you choose. You could decorate them to fit in an alien landscape an overgrown jungle, some kind of weird fantasy setting, post-apocalyptic, whatever. It's really just gonna come down to the finishings you choose. And the best part is that while building them, I came up with a new recipe for a hard coat for terrain that's gonna be really useful in a lot of projects moving forward. If you wanna pick up any tools or supplies to build these or whatever other hobby project you've got on the go, be sure to check out blackmagiccraft.ca. It's a great resource. I list all the stuff that I use regularly, helps you understand it, helps you get the right thing, and shopping through that page helps fund the production of videos like this. These towers could be made most easily out of solid XPS foam, but I wanted to make them in a more approachable way, and honestly, I didn't want to waste solid foam for them. So I opted for Dollar Store Foam Core. This is the variety of foam core where the paper is really well bonded, not the easy peel stuff, and that's really important here. This is also the type of project that you could absolutely do with cardboard instead if you don't have easy access to foam core. The difference will be totally irrelevant in the final project. I thought about making a template on the computer to print off, but really it's just as easy to quickly make a symmetrical template on a piece of paper. You only need one shape for all the sides. You can make it any size or angle you'd like. You can make a bunch exactly the same, or you could make a variety of different sizes and shapes to add variety to your table. It's totally up to you. Now I wanted three towers for reasons, Nurgle reasons. So I cut out enough pieces to construct three towers. Hot glue is the fastest way to assemble these. The most important thing to keep in mind with four sides that are exactly the same is that they need to each overlap one other side. This will keep the overall structure equally sized all the way around while using the same pieces. The last piece will be the most tricky because you have to glue two edges and kind of force them into their proper place. And this is where the hot glue really comes in handy for setting up quickly. To close up the tops, I just attached an oversized piece of foam. I could then cut them flush with an appropriate taper by easily using the sides of the larger pieces as a guide. Now, if you wanted, you could intentionally make the tops overhang to create a nice little platform to place models or decorative features. Really, the world is your foam core oyster. I wanted some larger bases on these and I wanted them to have a little bit of flair, so for each I cut two squares, one being a half inch wider in each direction. Layering these gives a nice stepped effect. Again, you could do this however you'd like, keep it simple or go crazy and make several layers for a more complicated look. Hot gluing the towers to these bases also allowed me to correct any out of squareness of the tower assemblies by lining them up with the edges of the base. Knowing that you can make this sort of fast correction later saves a lot of time and effort in the earlier portion of this build. And while not entirely necessary with the homemade texture paste I'd apply later, I wanted to cover the foam core seams. You can do this with construction paper, thin cardboard from food packaging, or thicker chipboard. It's all up to you. If you want to cover the corners, you can do so in a really nice way by cutting a wide strip, scoring the center, and folding it in half and wrapping it around the corner. And it's at this stage that you can really dictate the style of these generic shapes. I wanted something that looked like an alien structure of heavily oxidized and dirty metal. So I opted for a bunch of strips to imply that it was coated in kind of metal plates, but I did them all at odd angles and placements to make the structure seem slightly off-putting in its design. These simple shapes could tell so many different stories. But to tell my story, I wanted to add some kind of Nurgle symbolism. 
While I could have printed out something cool on my resin printer, one of the Nurgle icons is so simple I was able to just use some random bits to make them. I've got these small wood circles that I attached and then made the arrows out of some plastic arrow food picks. Since I was planning on coating these in texture paste and would be making them look really cruddy and grime covered, I didn't really have to worry about the hot glue mess. And in line with the off-putting, non-symmetrical theme I was going for, I just eyeballed the placement of these and intentionally made them all different and placed at different heights on the structures. Now for the fun part, this new texture paste. I wanted a homemade alternative to the Vallejo texture paste that I could make in large quantities for really cheap. And I tested out a bunch of mixtures and came up with two that were incredibly durable and gave slightly different finishes. One mix included some fine aggregate sand that was really durable but created a rougher finish than I wanted for this project. The basis for both mixtures is simple household acrylic latex caulking. This stuff is cheap and readily available at basically any hardware store and the beauty of acrylic caulking is that it's designed to be paintable. So I like to squeeze some out and mix some paint right into it. This way if there's ever any damage or chipping to the terrain pieces it doesn't stand out as bright white. And you can mix any colors you'd like but whatever they are keep in mind they're going to get lightened up by the white caulking. Don't expect to be able to mix in enough paint or ink to get a final result that's actually black or dark brown. Expect things to turn out green gray or beige. And at this point you could mix in some fine sand for that rougher finish or if you don't want chunks of sand but still want some hard texture you can instead mix in a bunch of regular baking soda. From my tests this makes a big difference in texture as well as hardness. There's really no perfect ratio here just mix a bunch in. I accidentally poured in way more than I had planned but in the end I was able to mix it all in. I expect that the more baking soda there is, the tougher the finish is going to be. You could probably use a variety of different additives here, but I'd suggest doing your own tests first. Baking soda is about as cheap and available as it gets, and it works well, so that's what I landed on. Now this isn't something you'd want to put on a build with a lot of fine details. That's still going to be a job for Mod Podge. But on less detailed terrain pieces, this is perfect. You can just slather it on and be really heavy handed with it. To avoid obvious brush strokes, I went over everything with a regular kitchen sponge. This gave a really great stippled texture that works good for stone, plaster, or in this case, rusted metal. This paste is so effective that I didn't clad the edges of the bases in any paper or chipboard. In my opinion, this coating will be durable enough to both hide and protect the exposed foam edges. And since I used black foam core, if there ever was a chip in it, it's going to look fine. The other great thing about this stuff is that it dries really quickly. In about an hour it's ready to paint. But if you leave it overnight it will be dry as a bone and really really hard. But keep in mind this won't harden the entirety of the foam. It's still going to be you know a base that's a little bit flexible or spongy. It just hardens the surface and protects it from chips and scratches and small dings. The nice thing about using the latex caulking though is that it will always remain somewhat flexible which will also prevent a lot of damage. Now for painting. I personally wanted crusty metal but you might want like a necron color scheme or maybe plain stone or concrete. It really depends on the style of your build. I wanted to see if I could keep this whole project kitchen table crafting friendly so I didn't use an airbrush and I didn't even use any spray primer. I just went at it with regular cheap craft paint. Using a few shades of browns I blended and applied them with a sponge and this helped create some variance in the tones of the rust which would make it look more realistic yeah, with very little effort. I also sponged on a little bit of really bright orange to really make them look rusty. Now one trick you can do on terrain that is supposed to be rusty metal is to dry brush on some dark gun metal metallic. It doesn't make a lot of sense when you think about it for the high areas of the metal to not be rusted when the rest is but on terrain pieces it really does help imply that these are in fact metal and not like brown stone or something. And these look pretty good at this point and I would have been fine stopping right here but I really wanted mine to be really filthy and gross so I added a brown wash. And while I opted to use this tub of Vallejo dip wash I didn't do it because it's better than my homemade wash I actually did it because it's worse. I find this particular product way too thick and sticky for most projects 
but these guys, well, it was perfect to use it up on. But to add some more tonal variety to the grime, I also dripped on some streaks of my own homemade black wash and let it kind of mix and streak with just a little bit of guidance from the brush. And since these were Nurgle themed, some green fluid seemed fitting. I decided to be brave and just drip on some very vibrant, almost neon green acrylic ink in the hopes that it would mix and dry in a cool way. I was a little bit nervous that it would be too vibrant, so I then mixed in some more black wash, as well as some orange ink to kind of look like rusty streaks. Now, I think the green actually would have been just fine on its own after drying, and that the orange itself was actually the mistake. Thankfully, after it all dried, it turned out a lot more subtle. And I decided to do one more quick metallic dry brush to bring those edges back and call it a day. These three towers were made start to finish with very little effort in just a few hours, and they're gonna look pretty great as random scattered terrain on my board. I really hope that these inspire some Nurgle players to build some cool themed terrain for their army, but I also hope that it inspires players of other armies and other games to take this concept of these basic towers and this new texture paste recipe and come up with all sorts of cool variants that fit their own games and themes. I'd personally like to make some more and really go to town on them, adding some weird Nurgle growths or tentacles and boils, but this will have to be saved for another day. I really hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, throw me a like and drop me a comment. If you get a lot of value out of these videos that I make, one way you can really help me keep doing them is by supporting the channel on Patreon. That support means a lot to me personally, but it also really helps in a big way, and I'd love to have you as the newest member of the Black Magic Craft Fellowship. Thanks for watching everyone. I'll see you again next week. Cheers.